You asked us after September 11, one of your points is we ought to look in the mirror, we being America or the yeah. West, we ought to look in the mirror at our own. Was that a way of saying, look, people like bin Laden are angry at us for good reason? No, in other words, is there a way to justify what That's not what I was saying. The statement of mine that you just quoted uh, is a very conservative statement. Uh, in fact, it was articulated by George Bush's favorite philosopher, Jesus Christ, uh, who pointed out, famously defined the notion hypocrite. Uh, a hypocrite is a person who focuses on the other fellow's crimes and refuses to look at his own. That's the definition of hypocrite by George Bush's favorite philosopher. When I repeat that, I'm not taking a radical position. But I'm even, taking a position which is just elementary morality. But even if he is a hypocrite, and they are even not he, just, everyone. Okay, even can if, you let me ask another question? See, if just here's an experiment. Try to find a phrase in the massive commentary on September 11th, which is not hypocritical in the sense of uh, George Bush's favorite philosopher. Find one phrase. All right, but before, I don't think you can do it. Okay, but before I, I don't want to get Gnostic here and, and religious on it, but I do want to... This is not religion. This is elementary morality. If people cannot rise to the level of applying to ourselves the same standards we apply to others, they have no right to talk about right and wrong or good and evil. But let's talk about even in right. And look, there's nobody pure, but an argument has been made. I know that the U.S. has committed atrocities. However, they did oust a more brutal regime, the Taliban. There was that wasn't even a war aim. There that was, wasn't even a war aim. It wasn't even a war aim. But is that a moral thing to do? They did get rid of a brutal regime. There fine. was celebration in Canada. Good, fine. Let them bomb Israel and get rid of the a brutal regime there. Let them bomb Uzbekistan and get rid of the brutal regime there. You say the Taliban and the Israeli government are the same? No, they're not the same. They're brutal regimes. But let's go back a stage. The goal was not to oust the Taliban. That was not a war aim. That was a war aim that was picked up several weeks after the bombing started. Okay? Uh, or, and let's go back. S suppose that we, and uh, there are dozens of, like, list a long list of brutal regimes around the world, uh, which ought to be overthrown, but not by somebody bombing them. Uh, however, let's go back to the late, late October, when the, after three weeks of bombing, when the U.S. and its British client uh, decided to shift the war aims to overthrowing the Taliban regime. There was a meeting sponsored by the United States in Peshawar, Pakistan, of a thousand uh, Afghan leaders. They unanimously condemned the bombing and said it was undermining their efforts, which they thought could succeed, to overthrow the Taliban regime from within. The U.S. is doing it just to show off their muscle. All right, now uh, you want to. So the question of whether to, to overthrow a regime, yeah, that arises. Uh, and I think the Afghans are right. Uh, regimes should be overthrown from within. And in this case, it was probably very likely that that would succeed. It was a small, uh, brutal group, highly unpopular, plenty of opposition to it, which could have been organized from within. And that's the way to overthrow a regime. If we want to overthrow the regime of Uzbekistan, now a great favorite, uh, but it happens to be not very different from the Taliban, the way to do it would not be to bomb Uzbekistan but to support internal democratic forces and let them do it. And that, that there, generalizes around the world. Now, Robert Kaplan, who writes about foreign policy, I spoke to him recently about his book, uh, Warrior Politics, and I, I put some of your points to him. He said about the distinction between the terrorist states that you call Israel, you know, America, and, and the terrorist states that America calls the Taliban. He said, I wish Noam Chomsky had been with me in Romania in the 70s or the 80s, just one of the seven or eight Warsaw states with just one of the seven or eight prison systems with 700,000 political prisoners. Adult choice of foreign policy is made on distinctions. The argument that Chomsky right. makes has no distinctions because there's a difference between the quantity and the kind of dictators that America supported and the quantity and the kind of things we went in in communist world for 44 years. Okay, so let's take his example, Romania, right. Ceausescu, hideous regime, yeah. which he forgot to tell you the United States supported, uh, supported right till the end, as did Britain. So the example that he gave is a perfect example, and it's a small example because we support much more brutal regimes. But Suharto was one of the worst killers of the, and torturers of the late 20th century. The United States and Britain supported him throughout. 
Uh, he's our kind of guy, as the Clinton administration said in 1995. Uh, horrible atrocities. In fact, you know, when he came into office in 1965 with a coup, uh, the CIA compared it to uh, Hitler, Stalin, and Mao. It led to total euphoria in the United States and Britain, massive support when he carried out even worse atrocities, comparable atrocities elsewhere. Uh, the couple of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people killed then, hundreds of thousands later. Full support continued right through the end of his rule. Uh, in fact, continued past his rule in late 1999 when they were rampaging and destroying what was left of East Timor, the U.S. and Britain continued to support him. And I can continue through the world like this. Well, I mean, Ka what Kaplan, is Kaplan says that, it, that there is a distinction. That everyone's got some blood on their hands, but he says, ah, we have significantly less blood because what we are less is blood. a soft imperialist, really? not That's, state terrorist. So like when we supported his example, Ceausescu in Romania right to the end, that's good. How about killing several million people in Vietnam? How about killing hundreds of thousands of people in Central America in the 80s, leaving four countries devastated beyond, uh, uh, you know, beyond, uh, maybe beyond recovery? But qualify but, the U.S. So, when no, they're intervening it in doesn't. any other way? Obs look, nor does it uh, disqualify bin, the, the fact that, that bin Laden is a terrorist or that, say, uh, the Taliban are a terrorist state, that fact doesn't disqualify them from bombing Washington. What disqualifies from doing that is even, is even if they were Mahatma Gandhi, they shouldn't do it. Uh, Kaplan's can't understand trivialities. The triviality here is that nobody's nobody except the ultra-right wing jingoists like Kaplan is comparing atrocities by various countries. What honest people are saying, this seems to be incomprehensible, is that we should keep to the elementary moral level of the Gospels. We should pay attention to our own crimes and stop committing them. This would be true even if we were killing one person. Okay, and it's even more true when we're killing millions of people. Let's right. bring it to the bigger picture then, just, just because it, the question he says we all agree with the gospel. This is, and then the he whole doesn't. Whole, he okay. doesn't. But he, he says, certainly look, does. Is I he believe in a Hobbesian world. This that, is what fine. he says. So is he that saying the we should Hobbesian, overthrow the? It's nasty. If you leave people alone, they'll kill each other. Yeah. And that's why what you need, was he calls, is an organizing hegemon, an overwhelming right. power, which that is always us. Yeah, which is always us, he says. Right, because we, and, and why is it us? Because we have the power, and we have a massively subservient intellectual class, of which he's an illustration, which will support U.S. atrocities no matter how awful they are. But he so says example, this is real politics, that Chomsky's will, off in another land with his gospel, that he says, with, look, not, we, Forget gospel, I'm talking about the most elementary morality. If a person doesn't understand that, they have no right to talk. Okay? If you don't understand that you pay attention to your own crimes, you have no right to talk. He talks about Machiavellian virtue. Sometimes we do a bad thing to protect our democratic and our good institutions and a just society. Yes. Now, how are we how protecting our democratic institutions by supporting mass slaughter in southeastern Turkey in the last few years? Was that supporting our democratic institutions? Was it supporting... Our democratic institutions? Not ours, but... Anybody? Would Kaplan argue that the nation state has a right to use any means necessary to protect its sovereignty. Oh, then, then he's justifying Milosevic. He's saying Milosevic had any had the right to do anything he wanted uh, to repress the Kosovars in Albania. Is that what he's saying? Do we need a, a, a constabulary, a force, a, a central force? In this case, it's America, America because it's the superpower to sometimes use unjust means in the service of just causes. What are the just causes? What was the just cause in, for example, slaughtering Kurds in southeastern Turkey? What was the just cause? I can, what I, was the just cause in supporting Suharto uh, when, he wiped, when he killed a couple hundred thousand landless peasants in Indonesia, uh, went on to become one of the biggest torturers in the world, and then destroyed, uh, slaughtered a third of the population of East Timor? What was the just cause? What was the just cause when we invaded South Vietnam 40 years ago? This is the 40th anniversary of the public announcement of the U.S. attack on South Vietnam ending up killing millions of people, leaving the country devastated, they're still dying from chemical warfare. What was the just cause? What was the just cause when we fought a war to a large extent against the Catholic Church in Central America in the 1980s, killing hundreds of thousands of people, every imaginable kind of torture and devastation? What was the just cause? 
Can I continue? Yeah, we w the just cause for, for people like Kaplan is we did it. Therefore, it's a just cause. You can read that in the Nazi archives, too. Hitchin says we've seen the enemy, and the enemy isn't us. It's the Islamic fascists. The bears into fascists. They're we an don't want to live with them. We don't want to negotiate yeah. them. We must destroy them. Ergo, the war against the Taliban justified. The war against the Al-Aqsa brigades justified. I mean, he has a different distinction. But we see the face of the enemy, and we should do anything to root them out. How do you respond to that argument? I respond to that by saying that there are many evil forces in the world. Uh, if we want to stop atrocities, I think it's a great idea to reduce the level of atrocities and violence around the world. The easiest way to do it, simplest, is to stop participating in it. If we stop participating in it, we will already reduce the level of atro atrocities and violence enormously. And if we can ever reach the moral level, minimal moral level, of terminating our own massive participation in atrocities, then we can move to another question of what we do about the atrocities of others. And I think, there are, I think it's right to deal with them. Yes, there is an enemy. There are people who carried out crimes against humanity. And there are ways to deal with crimes, uh, not by uh, 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 bombing another country and putting millions of people at the risk of starvation. That's not a way to deal with crimes. Uh, when the US was condemned for international terrorism in Nicaragua and then vetoed a security and dismissed the condemnation by the World Court, of course, uh, and escalated the crimes and vetoed a Security Council resolution calling out on it to observe international law. The right reaction for Nicaragua was not to say, we have seen the enemy and uh, we must destroy them, so therefore let's set off bombs in Washington. But if it's wrong for them, it's wrong for us again, by elementary moral standards. So we should ask, well, what was right for them? And what's right for, which would be right for us? And I think uh, they couldn't do what was right for them because we blocked it, we're too powerful. But we could do what was right for them and we never even considered it because we don't rise to that minimal moral level.